Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual. And as you can see, I am joined by the lovely and gracious Ben Bateman. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing great. All right. So both of us, uh, your former client, as as is our understanding, is in court right now, but we don't we don't have a feed for it. No, disappointed. It is have a, a live feed. I was I was looking forward to it. I, I know. So I I think our Nevada judges is recording in that room. So you know we might do something later. I don't know, but but for now we've just got uh, we've got whatever uh, crazy Karens I had available. <laughs> I had stuff. I was just, I was just telling Ben. I'm like, I had a, I had a hearing this morning. It was actually in Winnebago County. But I, I'm like, all right, now I've got, now I've got a tie on. I'm going to stream. So, so let's do this thing. We're going to kick it off with a nice awkward opening in Kansas. Always fun to see Judge Webster. Let's do it. Our Wednesday, September twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, traffic docket. Like, who do we have there at the county jail? If you could unmute and tell me your name. The gentleman in orange. Maybe you're not at the county jail. Jackson Hill, where are you? <laughs> Just wearing orange. I'm at uh, my dorm room. <laughs> yeah, you've got a really wild echo we're not going to be able to work with. I assumed you're at jail because you are wearing orange. So I'm glad you're not. I'm sorry about that. No, no, not a problem. Yeah, keep that. All right, folks. My name is Judge Alexander. Okay, this judge is a trip. He is, like, super animated. He's like uh, Mr. Rogers. He has more patience than you can imagine. This is going to make you crazy because you've heard this a bunch of times. But the the first defendant, there she is with her arms folded really really tries to screw this up wow look at that just they're just sitting there at the, at the yeah you'll table. see he's about he's about to hand out bonds to him and uh oh oh does she need your services in the worst way but, but like her body language already yeah <laughs> i'm going to magistrate you so what that means is i'm going to take what your bail is how to get out of jail on bail what your rights are those type of things, okay? So just understand that bail is good faith money. If you make bail, they'll let you go home. They give you a date to come back and you talk to your judge about how you wish to plead. Perfect. If you do not make bail, they just hold you here or over in Del Valley until it becomes time for you to see your judge. So make bail if you can. There are four ways to make bail. The first way is to pay the full amount. In just a little bit, I'll tell you what the bail is for you. If you could pay it or someone could pay it from the outside, uh, you'll be released after processing time and you'll get all the money back at the end of your case, whether you win or lose. Number two, what you could do if you don't have the full amount of the bail, you could pay 10% to a bail bondsman. They'll keep that 10%. You don't get that money back, but still, and yet it is a good opportunity for some folks. Number three is the personal bond. The personal bond is a good deal because if you get this, it's only 40 bucks to get out. Yep. And you don't even pay today, you pay next week. So that's the personal bond. The people from pretrial services will interview you. And if they think you should get a personal bond, a judge, they'll make a recommendation to a judge. And judge will sign off if they agree and you're out on that bond. The fourth way out on bail is to hire an attorney. Not only can your attorney represent you, but they can get bond for you as well. So those are four ways. Number one, Pay the full amount. Number two, the bail bondsman. Number three, maybe you qualify for a personal bond. Number four, hire an attorney. Now understand, as far as your rights, 
you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you. And you have the right to an attorney, either one you hire. Guess what? That doesn't stop her from staying, saying stupid stuff. And this guy is so patient. He gives this nice, slow lecture. Or one the court gives you because you can't afford them. All right. Understand, if you give an interview with the police or state's attorney, you have the right to have your attorney present during that whole time. And whenever you want to end the interview, you may. May I talk, sir? Uh, one second. All right. So what I'll say is this. Um, no one's saying you're convicted or accused of anything. You're just facing an allegation. But if someone is not a U.S. citizen and they ultimately get convicted, a conviction could screw up your immigration status, cause you to be deported, or prevent you from being a naturalized citizen of the U.S. So if you are another a citizen of another country and you want your counselor to know that you're here in jail, you can go about that one of two ways. One, you can let me know now inform them that you want to talk with your counselor about the issue. And two, if you don't want me or anyone to know about your immigration status, tell your attorney. And your attorney will tell uh, the counsel on your behalf. All right. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is talk to you individually. I'm going to give you some very basic own information about your case. <laughs> you didn't get Once into I'm that. done, if you have any questions, then ask. Okay. All right. The first person I have is Miss Viola Jones. Yes, sir. Here, here okay. we go. Miss Jones, it looks like you're here for one higher charge. It's going to be an obstruction of highway passageway. It's a class B misdemeanor. Well, my Nancy they said that you're black on the street. Sir, may I talk? Yeah. I the street. Oh, Sir, I went to the liquor store, the store that I go to almost every day. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Before you get into the facts of the matter, I want you to understand I'm not the judge that takes care of the facts. I just tell you what is your accused of. Okay. So let me just let me say this. As far as an attorney, because that's what you really need right now. Do you want the court to appoint you one or do you want to hire one? I don't have no money to hire a lawyer, okay? You the court to give you one? Excuse me? You want the court to give you one? Oh, uh, y'all can't then? And yes. I signed for yeah, yeah, she kicks it off with, I go to the liquor store where I go <laughs> every, every day. day. Which is, uh, these are alcohol-related offenses, and I, I think, I'm not even sure, I think she stole from the liquor store, and you'll find out later she's got DUI issues. It, it just... I mean, right off the bat, I mean, Ben's cringing over there. Just don't I, say any of that. <laughs> don't I, say any yes, of that. Please stop. <laughs> A personal bond last night. Oh, there are two different things. Personal bond is how do you get out on bail? I'm talking about when you get in front of your judge and you got to make your plea. Who do you want to stand beside you? Do you want a attorney you pay for or do you want the court to give you one? And at this time, I, I heard that you said that you want a court-appointed attorney. Is that right? Because I cannot hire one. I don't have any money. Yeah, you don't allow me to get my money. Right. I'm going to put you down for a court-appointed attorney. And uh, sir, he's got money to go to the liquor store know. every day. Now you watch me. Excuse me. I'm asking. I'm out of nothing but respect. No Go disrespect. Ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I want to know if, how do I know if I get personal bond okay that's what i want to know from you oh i'll tell you excuse uh, me i'll tell you if you're getting personal bond okay yes sir that's all i need to know okay well you are getting personal bond thank you in the name of jesus so understand that within eight hours from this time you'll be released on bail yes sir all right now oh dear <laughs> And I'm the one thing, when I get home, nothing better be wrong with my dog, my house, 
And I don't understand why y'all separate my Bible and didn't give me all my personal things. That don't make sense to me. Oh, yeah. She wants answers now. She doesn't feel like she's been treated right. She doesn't have her Bible. You know, she's a God-fearing woman. Yes. And her dog, I guess. <laughs> Didn't let her take her dog with the with her in the. In the She's like, yeah, you, 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 my dog better be okay. Oh, uh, you're the one who got popped for a crime. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and the liquor store better be open when I get out. <laughs> Where do I go pick up my personal things, Lord? Uh, sir, Judge, I'm asking you because they separated my Bible, my purse, everything that was in my purse. They only gave me my uh, wallet and some paperwork that I had in my purse. They took my Bible and my purse and told me that they keep it in for safekeeping. I don't understand that. Then they took my shoes off my feet and my socks when I got into that uh, uh, that police car. Let me tell you one more thing. You have a, a class C misdemeanor. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> now, what well, well, you could just she's just whining away. The judge doesn't care. He's gonna stick to his script. He doesn't care. <laughs> like, could you see the poor the other women there at the table? They're just like, oh why yeah, did you I let love me go first? Woman. Mine would have been quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is three options. You could fight the case. He not guilty. Yes, sir. If you do that, I'll set you for a court hearing in municipal court today. The, the, the trial won't be today, but I'll set you for a court date today. Okay, you can do That's that. That's one. Number two, you could plead guilty to no contest and just accept the conviction on record and pay a fine. You could do that. Or three, you could talk with the prosecutor about getting the case dismissed without going to trial. Now, Ms. Jones, <laughs> what do you want to do on the Class C mystery? Talk to a prosecutor. All right. And also, I have a hearing on the 20th for my driving license. And today is the 16th. And this judge knows what they're doing to me. I don't understand. Every single year they mess with me. I'm 45 years old. I don't have time for this. I'm trying to live my life and be at peace. I don't like talking out loud, sir. <laughs> she doesn't have time for this court uh, stuff because she's got yeah. she's got her DUI to take care of. Of course, it gets in the way, you know. Right. It always and, does. And that. both of those charges have nothing to do with her going to the liquor store every day. <laughs> oh, good lord! She I'm is living her person. best life, man. They done took my liquor store every me day and everything. Got my record looking bad. Set me up for failure every year since mm -hmm. they took my daughter. All right. Well, we'll take care of this. The yep. class C misdemeanor works and take care of today. The yep. rest, I can't take care of. I, appreciate, take I appreciate you. And let right. me tell you one more thing. When I talk to that judge on the 20th, I don't have no time to send no paperwork in because they know I did that DWI class on my uh, computer online. And I paid $200, and I just want my license reinstated. That's it. All right. Well, yes, sir. Good luck, man. I've done everything possible since I've gotten out of plain state. March he doesn't 30. have anything to do with that. Okay. I did everything they told me to do. <laughs> paid my reinstatement fees, went to the uh, doctor, and went to the everywhere I was supposed to go. Faxed everything. So they playing with me. Good luck, man. Yes, sir. I, thank you. All right. Miss uh, Rebel, I'm sorry. Miss Rebel Leah uh, Gall. He's done. He's done. I'm sorry. Okay. So, am I getting out today? Within eight hours. Eight hours. Okay. Thank you. You have a blessed day. All right. Miss Gall. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, <laughs> I just want you to know that you're hurting Jack's feelings. Aww. Yes, sir. Okay. So, your bond is going to be set at 2500 2500 and that's on the possession of controlled substance the pill case now what type of attorney would you want a court appointed sir 
one. And the next case is going to be a possession of controlled substance that's a state jail felony charge. That's going to be $10,000 maximum fine if convicted and six months to two years in state jail if convicted. That's going to be a bond of $5,000. Now, it, I want to tell you that you did receive a personal bond. I did? Yes. Yeah. Or actually, let me see. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you, sir. All right. Now, you, part of that personal bond says you have to have a on the attend a drug court screening. Okay. You must attend that. Okay. Otherwise, the bonds is going to be re revoked and you'll they'll bring you back. So okay. take care of that. Yes. All right. Let me see. All right. Okay. I see there is also a ticket for no insurance. No, I have insurance. They say this happened back on August 22nd. Ninth or twenty twenty. Oh twenty second, twenty twenty. Okay. And on the same day there was a run the red light charge. A what? A run the red light charge. Oh, okay. Yes, I recall that. Three things you can do. One, you can fight the case. <laughs> Two, you can just plead guilty to no contest Get and skip the trial. There. Or three, you can talk to a prosecutor about ways to avoid this being on your record without the grand trial. Okay. What do you want to do? Well, I'll just say option one involves going to trial for each case. All right. If it's a so judge trial the or case. a jury trial, you get to decide what it is. Judge or jury. Okay? okay. That won't be today. It'll be sometime in the future. I'll set you for that right now. Okay. Number two, what you could do is just plead guilty right now. Okay. If, and number three, what you could do is talk, have a date to talk to a prosecutor about how to avoid this conviction. Um, so if I pick the third one, uh, it would be a date set in the near future, and I just need to to show up. Right. If you don't, it'll be more again. Right, right, right. I would like back here. the third one. All right. Do you still live at Round Rock? Very good. We'll send the notice to your house. Okay. Okay. Um. Any questions, ma'am? So, um, so I'll be released within eight hours. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you so much, Your Honor. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Okay. 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 <laughs> Okay, so that guy is a ham. That that judge is, is over yeah. the top of the C and the in the whole thing. But it yeah. but it does go a lot smoother if you don't just ask a pile of stupid questions before he gets to his speech out. Yeah, he's gotta get through his spiel. But I gotta do that, man. I wanna know like when I do my clients. <laughs> so like, we can fight the case. What's, what's this what's the international civil for negotiate? We can cut a deal. What's a cut a deal? Uh, we can uh, yeah, uh, I, gotta, I need some hand gestures there so I can he he is something else. I, that <laughs> first one he's so nice the first one could have gotten herself in trouble with a lot of judges but yeah. this guy was this guy had all sorts of patience so I give him credit all right I, I can't remember what I have next let's okay. see Mr. Seagal is here in a probation status you're coming on us oh this this is my buddy Derek Wyatt Derek Derek's been on the show here and uh, right. we're down in El Paso, and we're we're not in front of Judge Ron Hell as usual, but uh, okay, you, you'll see Derek's really over the top, which is how I started this. But you'll you'll see he calibrates it back. He's got a serious case here. The judge is having none of it, and she's right. She's she seems really cool, and uh, you'll see it's a serious situation. That is hearing. It was on my docket. 
<clears throat> it does show up with Mr. Underwood's name, but he's on probation already at this point. Um, I asked to start your video. Hi. So right now we're just looking at a at a modification. But hold on, let's see what happens. This is 2020-0D05205, 2020-0D03092, the state of Texas versus Stephen Joel Sigala. Set for a probation status hearing. Announcement of counsel, please. FM Von Hoppen on behalf of State of Texas. John, are ready? Uh, Derek Wine on behalf of Mr. Sigala. Respectfully ready to proceed, Judge. All right. I'm actually pretty familiar with Mr. Sigala's reasons for being here because I've got a very urgent uh, request from his probation officer about what was happening with him, but Ms. Udon, so that we get the dates and the details correct, will you please advise Mr. Von Hoffman and Mr. Wyatt why we are here? I will, Judge. Um, Mr. Sigala completed BHRTC on August 8th of this year, Judge. He was placed in BHRTC due to having substance use issues with fentanyl. Um, which stemmed from back in October of 2021. Um, he had been to Trinity Psychiatric Hospital. He ended up at BHRTC. Uh, he was released. He completed it uh, successfully, however, on the 17th of August. Um, the CSO was informed that he was hospitalized for having overdosed on fentanyl three times within a 24-hour span. Um, he was held on a EDO while there, but then he was eventually released. Uh, CSO, due to the concern, uh, requested that bench warrant. He did go into Trinity for detox on the 18th of August, um, and then was released on the 22nd in which uh, the bench warrant was executed. Uh, families concerned for his well-being as well as the department, so uh, okay. they are recommending safety judge. Um, CSO did do a couple jail visits with Mr. Sigala, and he's not in agreement with treatment, indicates that he can do it on his own. Um, that's where we're at, Judge. Okay, Ben, have you have you ever had uh, clients with fentanyl? Uh, just a handful. It's just starting, though. There, I'm, there are, yeah, more and more cases of this stuff. And I mean, I don't do like, it, but I, I guess it's a one-way street. It, it's bad stuff. Yeah, this guy's what had three overdoses. This guy's like, yeah, and gotten... and that's why I said usually Derek's kind of over the top and sort of fun, but not here. I mean, this is just deadly serious stuff. This guy's a cat, man. He's got nine lives apparently, or something. But I yeah. I, I didn't catch it the, the first time through. So they 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 say okay, well he, he's been through treatment and obviously relapsed. But the, she's the judge is saying go back to treatment. He's like, no, nah, I can handle it myself. No, I'm, I'm good. I can quit whenever I want. Yeah, right. yeah. The judge is not having that. At all, I, this is the yeah. first time I've seen her, but like she, she seems is... really good. <laughs> so, yeah. Mr. Sigala, you had just finished residential treatment, and within ten days, you had three ODs. What's changed? Sure. Um, what was changed is that I realized that I mean, coming here and opened my eyes and I mean, realized that. Well, yeah, you've been in jail before. You've been in yeah. jail before, and you finished residential treatment. So give me something else. Um, just a little bit of freedom. I got it was, it was nice. I mean, I got to spend time with my kids. Um, I realized that overdosing wasn't like it's not, not something I want. It's not the life I want anymore. Um, but it's so unfortunate. But it's I guess getting locked up this time just opened my eyes. You know, and, um, I got to say some freedom, and I I fell back. And you, sure. and you wasted it. And you wasted it. You got a taste of freedom, and you almost killed yourself three times. And and that's what we know about. That's what we know about. I, I, I not only think you absolutely need more treatment, I think you're going to die if I don't put you in treatment. So if you don't want to do safe P, if you don't want to do safe P, then we're going to revoke you, and you'll do some time, and you'll get out. And if you want to die, you'll do it on your time, but not on my time. So... If you are going to remain on probation, you will do treatment. And if you don't want that, then we're looking at revocation. Judge, let me let me go talk to him. I kind of understand what his problem is, and I, I've seen this kind of thing before. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'll go uh, take a, a visit and talk to him. Maybe we could reset this for next week. 
So I've, I've seen people go through these conditions and my heart. Yeah, that conversation conversation's gonna go uh -huh. like, uh, um, hey, knucklehead, you don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no plan it, B here. You know what? You don't have what we call leverage. Uh, to right. Target, negotiate, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so yeah. It goes out to Mr. Sagala, and I think if I talk to him, that uh, that we can we can reach an agreement on this, Judge. Well, I mean, the agreement is treatment. I mean, I, I understand, I, Your Honor. All right. I'm otherwise, on the we're same. looking at yeah, and otherwise, the state will file a motion, and we can have a contested hearing. Um, but but I am I, I am. Well, pretty solid on where I stand. I, this officer reached out to me uh, urgently because Mr. Sigala uh, was was doing a really good job of being on that road to killing himself. So that's that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. I understand. Okay, he's thousand not percent. We're on, we're on the same page, Judge. Thousand All percent. Right. I I think it's for his own good. Myself, he needs All right. fentanyl we'll is resetting. the most serious thing out there right now. Uh, let, right, let me go talk to your honor. I do know that. Right. All right. And just yes, just so your honor knows, we, we we would prefer treatment too because we don't want to see him kill himself. All righty. No, we'll nobody wants that. Nobody we'll wants that at all. We'll see y'all back. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Have a great day, everybody. God bless. Bye. God like bless. I say, say. Remember, you look marvelous. Calling the matters of the people versus Padilla case number. Okay, this is weird. I don't know why I have this one in here. This guy's this guy's busted. Maybe you can explain this to me. This whole thing gets okay. down to contracting. The, the defendant yeah. is there in his best uh, shorts and t-shirt, dressed like a contractor. The problem is he's not a contractor. Oh. But okay. somewhere in here, they're they're talking about a felony, and I don't know if it's just is that like working without really? a contractor's license? Can they get you a felony? You know, is it what state is this in? California. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah, I live in Nevada. We're East California. They haven't changed the name yet, but, uh, it's the, the last 10, 15 years, they've really, they've criminalized things that should be civil matters really like, you know, with doing uh, work without a contractor's license, they've made these things, um, criminal and it's, it's, uh, it's nuts. That's what I, and, I can see a misdemeanor, but I, this is, I believe this is in Modesto, California, but we'll, we'll just see. I was just kind of, I'm glad you're here for it. Numbers CR 21, TAC 3106, and CR 21, TAC 9472. Mr. Padilla is present in court. He is here with his attorney, Ms. Brashears. The people are represented by Ms. Newman. The cases are in case management conference status. It seems as if it's time to set the preliminary hearing. I have a suggestion, Your Honor. Okay. He is currently enrolled in his classes to get his contracting license, and he should have the license by the end of the year per the schedule of the class. Um, he, I think if he, we could put it out to January, I do think there could be a resolution. He just wanted to get that license and talk to Ms. Parmarino, but he knows that the cases do need to be resolved. I don't know that we need to set a prelim, but he would like to get the license. Will that impact the people's position on this case? It, because there's two cases pending, we would need a, a guilty plea to one seventy twenty eight contracting without a license, and that's that's operative. And then there's also restitution for two victims here. We would need that to remain in play. It might impact the. I mean, restitution for victims is that like because he did work for them but didn't have a license? Yeah, or he yeah he took money and didn't do work or something. I, I, I that's why this one fascinated me. I know it's like a boring one, but it's it's not and like I'm like what the hell's going on? <laughs> Fine that we have proposed uh, in the settlement of five thousand dollars. So if he does get his license, we would be willing to negotiate that. And you know, I'm not saying that Mr. Padilla can't get his license, but I don't think it's as, as easy as maybe passing the DMV test, for example. You know, it, 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 he's taking a class every Tuesday that's a three hour class. Have you ever tried parallel parking, Judge? For the next three months, <laughs> that helps him prepare to pass the test. But what, I, what I'm proposing that we do is set it for a preliminary hearing in January. And that's fine. Well, that's what I'm proposing. I, I think likely it could be a resolution that day. 
I, as long as I, I hate for it to be set and have everybody brought to court. I mean, we are working towards a resolution. It's just that if he gets his license, then because the 5,000 fine on top of the restitution is significant because the restitution itself is significant. So we were hoping that if he shows the license, we can negotiate on the fine. But I do think we're close to a resolution and I would hate to bring everybody to court for a prelim if it's just going to resolve. And he knows it's going to resolve. We're just trying to work out some of the details. Well, you can think of an alternative, alternate resolution, too. So if it's just that's not my case. I'm just standing in for today. So it's hard for me to know when that will take place. That's every judge. Uh, no, let's not have uh, multiple settings of BS uh, hearings that yeah. are going nowhere. Right? Let's put, put some pressure on somebody with something, you, you know? Get your license, bro. That's what yep. you should say. Just <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Newman, what, what your is hand. your position with regard to the next hearing and when it should be set? Well, January is um, on my calendar extremely busy, um, and so is February. So, um, uh, and I do need to get someone here from the Contractor State Licensing Board for that. And if we are going to settle it, then a, a, an expert comes from Sacramento for that here for preliminary. Well, I think then, then I think what needs to happen is you need to talk about, and maybe this is not the right, I mean, maybe Ms. Parlamento has to be the one that I'm speaking to about this. But what I think should happen is alternative resolutions. So if he gets his contractor's license, what would the resolution be? If he doesn't, then it's that. And you could resolve that ahead of time. Sure. Okay. We and come back for sentencing. He could set it kind of thing. Prelim with the idea that we could always put it for a CCR if he does get the license, if that's a way you'd want to handle it. Well, I, I mean, putting it out to January is, is a long time, really. It's, it's a long time. What if, uh, okay, so when is he scheduled to take his test? It would be, he's thinking it would be sometime before the end of the year. He doesn't have be in December. In December. Okay, and it's pretty instantaneous as I understand it that they, they find out they pass. I think you figure uh, out. Like uh, Saturdays, like uh, uh, did you pre-test before I go do my real test? I think they get the Saturdays. results pretty instantaneously. Yeah. And then I got classes every Tuesday and then I'm doing that on my own. I'm yeah. the with the CDs and the book. So we could do a, um, a set or subtle um, type hearing, I guess, and you think it's the beginning of December? Uh, it's going to be in the middle, like, I think it was December 15 or 12, I can't remember, to be honest with you. What is your availability? Are you, you're probably not here, Ms. Newman, but the, I'm just looking at the week of December 27th through the 30th. That's so, fine. That, that should be fine. If, if, yeah. So I'll set a final early case management conference and a case management conference, uh, and really, I think everybody needs to get together, because if, if, if he passes the test and, and does everything he needs to to qualify to, pass, to even take the test, then I, th I think a resolution should be entered at that time. Yes, I'll leave notes for Ms. Parmoreno uh, for her to uh, contact Ms. Newman and they can get the that issue thing sort in of. play is just the fine. Yeah. It, it, given, given his, if he passes the test, then we would negotiate the fine. But if, there, if he doesn't pass the test, then the fine needs to be paid, as well as the restitution. The restitution amount won't change, even, right. even if he passes the test, nor right. will are the people's position on pleading guilty to at least one charge of 7028. All right. Well, at least everybody understands each other now. Yes. So, Mr. Padilla, you do have the right to a speedy preliminary hearing in your felony matter and the right to a speedy jury trial in your misdemeanor matter. Do you waive those speedy trial rights? Yes. How about December 29th? That'll be fine. 29. Sure. Are you ordered to return December 29th, 2022 at 8.30 in the morning back in this department? And I'm going to make extensive notes here because my expectation is that this case either resolve on that day or be set for a preliminary hearing in short order. Yes, I'll leave the same notes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much. Well, there you have All it. Right. He better pass the test. He, he better pass the test. I just, <laughs> but I, I'm, you know, it's funny. I'm learning a lot from that. that. That was a weird one. I don't know. I was just kind of curious about that case. So I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll just make my, my chat uh -huh. explain it to me. I do that a lot. <laughs> There you go. But that's, yeah. that that must be it. They are serious. But it, it says two charges. I mean, I don't know the the rest of it, but it says two charges, one misdemeanor and one felony. One felony. It, yeah, I don't it know. It must be the... an amount of money. Like if you if you accept, say, I don't know, I'm making this up, but over ten thousand dollars, and you aren't yeah. and you aren't licensed, and that's then that that takes it to felony land or something like that. Right, but I. 
you know, they've, yeah, criminalized some of these things that, I mean, why wouldn't that just be fraud? You know, I don't know. They could, right. But then they overcharge it with, they'll charge them with fraud and then they'll also charge them with uh, no, you know, no license, no this, that, and they I, stack I like it, it on them, you know? So we, 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 we got the, the criminal defense uh, attorney here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those, those those overcharging prosecutors, you know? Oh, it's, 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 you know, there's an art form to it because it's like, okay. Then they look like good guys. They look like the reason. Well, look, we cut, you know, six, six of his charges. He's only have to plead to one. Well, yeah. I know you were watching a little it's bit. It's game we play. With with mm-hmm. Judge Manning, uh, who was it? Uh, Deborah was saying that the, there might have been some overcharging. Well, th- suggesting that it's possible there's overcharging. I just think those people commit a lot of violations. But <laughs> the, the, although I told you, you you texted me yesterday. That was interesting. She kept saying you can't co- you can't go into uh, Fulton County, and you texted me. Yeah, we uh, we kick them out of we kick them out of what the the resort corridor here, so they can't go on the Strip or um, or like downtown in. Uh... Uh, so that's a common area, like a common bond condition for certain offenses. Common bond or a condition of uh, yeah of, your, of release, yeah. So if you're yeah condition of your release, or sometimes on probation too, it can be. Um, certainly, like gaming crimes, if you're like past posting or something like that, then you're um, you know they'll they'll order you to stay out. Oh, that's cool. Past, yeah. So do you, do you past get, posting you, is when you try and. You see, like the card, and you try and put a chip on it. Just if you ask some people, if you know, yeah, what is past posting? So if you see the 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 um, whatever, like blackjack, and you see that the dealer goes over, and then you try and push your chip onto the, you know, oh hey, look, I had that bet, and you you busted. That's uh, that's not good. That's a category B felony here. That's actually a uh, a big one. But wow. it happens. People, Ooh, the, the, you know, the they give you free the, the drinks and you're, you're, yeah, you're, uh, yeah, imagine, you know, and your your judgment goes and <laughs> it's a big That's deal. That's interesting. Do, do you ever, do you ever, do you ever do any defense on gaming crimes like that? Uh, a couple, like casino markers too. That's sort of like when, you know, they give you credit and you don't pay it back. It's sort of like a bounce check is how they sort of. It'd be considered right. like that, like a casino markers or yeah, past posting where you do the, uh, you know, try and cheat like, oh, hey, I had this on, you know, or the roulette wheel. Yeah, I had it on black, you know, the whole time. So, oh, that's, I mean, that's there's cameras cool. like, everywhere. You can't cheat those. Places. I mean, yeah. So that is, I guess, unique here. But there's, you know, every square inch of that casino is covered in cameras and witnesses. I mean, you're not going <laughs> to. Yeah, I would imagine yeah. the prosecutions on those things are locked and loaded most of the time. Pretty much, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Ben. Well, so, thanks yeah, for coming by. They're like, hey, you got to stay out of the resort corridor for. Is they have in court betting? <laughs> I I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, all right, Ben. Thanks a lot for coming by. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. We may or may not. Uh, I think he froze up. Oh, we may or may not. Are we there? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you're back now. We, I'm just okay. signing off. Um, we we may or may not be back if uh, if we get a hold of uh, whatever whatever happened in the Blandino matter to today. All right. All right. We'll Thanks see. a lot. See y'all later. All right. Good to be here. Bye. <laughs>